Hi friends, this is Katie. Today I want to do a video that's a video response to a question by Simon with Two Spirit. He had a video where he talks about soul decks and he asked a question to the community, do you have a soul deck? Um, and so I put some thought into it because I have about 50 tarot decks and I went deck by deck on my shelves and so many of them came close that I really like but um, it was an emphatic no that they are not my soul deck but it brought me full circle to um, a deck that is is my soul deck and um, with a clear reason why that I'll explain but um, a project that I deeply love that I have not um, put much time and effort into lately be just because of other life circumstances. Um, so anyway, so I want to show it today and um, in response to the question, talk about this deck. It, I can, it's an oracle deck, not a tarot deck, um, pieced together by myself um, through a process called Soul Collage. And it, some people know um, about it. It's, it's moderately well known. Uh, it combines kind of um, Jung psychology and deep diving into imagery and symbolism and archetypes um, through this process. And, and it's a fairly formal process. In fact, there's even a book called Soul Collage by uh, Sina Frost. She uh, passed away about a year ago, but um, the Soul Collage organization is, um, I think, out of the Santa Cruz area in California. Here's a picture of her. And so I was taught this process by a, a friend of mine when I lived in Seattle. We would um, come together with groups of a couple women and spend an afternoon piecing together images and cards and um, uncover some writing, uh, you know, some wisdom through, through writing exercises. So the Soul Collage deck is called The Story of You, and it's working with the language of... Um, symbols and archetypes and dreams and imagery to um, tap into uh, your deeper wisdom. So I found this box and this is what I put them in and there's about, I don't know, about between 60 and 70 cards that I've made in here. Um, and actually here's a couple, these are different cards that kind of represent your soul and how you view source, energy, that kind of thing. But the, the way that you make them technically is you just use um, blank um, card matting for uh, pictures, like picture frames, and a glue stick and you know, an exacto knife and scissors, and you grab magazines and you just rip through magazines without putting thought in it, without reading anything either, but you just pull images from magazines and you just rip them out, even if you don't know why you like them or what you're drawn to. Like, I look at this and I see a woman that's sitting on top of a lot of baggage, right? This could represent personal baggage. So that's what I think it is, but I don't know yet, right? Because you just, like, pull imagery, whatever looks interesting. This one, clearly, I love this. Does this not look kind of like a, a Three of Wands image in your Rider Waite deck? Um, like she's waiting for her ship to come in. I adore that and I can't wait to see what that will look like when I put it on a card. And you kind of combine the images. So then I kind of put a little uh, frame over it and then I can get an idea of what it might look like on a card. So that's kind of how it works is you just pull image after image after image even if you don't know why and then you get an idea of you know, how they're going to be pieced together. So hey, look at this woman right here and if I put her on a card I kind of see her just wallowing in her own thoughts maybe. That's what it looks like to me is this is a thought bubble. She's like up to her waist in her own thoughts and again I don't know yet because I just rip through magazines and then you piece together uh, and glue the images onto a, a card and then you journal about it and so I have this whole 
book that's just loaded with um, writings that are all on the cards that I've made. And there are certain questions that help you uncover the deeper meaning. So we'll just look at a couple of them. Um, like this one, I haven't journaled on, but when I do, I think what I'm going to see is I'm going to see some sort of hierophant energy. I'm going to see like like deep wisdom of a, of a tree, like shamanic type of energy, but mixed with this traditional um, teaching. I don't know, but that's my guess. Because these are ones I haven't journaled on. I kind of see like this empress energy there. This one I love. I don't have a clue what it's going to say to me. I don't know, but I was so drawn to the image. I don't know, the elephants are a thing for me. Yeah, cats are just my familiar. I'm a full-on cat lover, I admit it. I'm a cat lady. So this is going to be interesting <clears throat> to figure out what that one means. I know I'm not being very helpful. These are ones that I haven't um, written on. I put a little clue on the back. So this one, I love this one, but this is clearly some sort of inner child influence. Look at she's carrying these crows, these little mushrooms and ladybugs also are spiders. It's like she's haunted by some sort of, um, you know, there's something, you know, in the past, probably some sort of trauma, shame, whatever. And then the doorknob, I put that on extra. So she's about to like open the door and uncover something. My baggage goes with me. Sugar. Sugar is my addiction. There's no secret there. I don't know which way is up on this one. I think I made a note. This one is second chakra creativity. See, and she's kind of holding it around her second chakra, so I think this is going to be something around creativity and fruitfulness and feminine energy. Uh, yeah, this one is like, I put this image on this background. He looks like he's a little bit intimidated by facing the speed of, you know, what's happening outside those doors in the real world. He's contemplating how he's going to face, getting ready to do battle with the outside world. That's just a fabulous image what it's going to say to me yet. Yeah, this one I sat with for like two years and couldn't figure out what it was. Again, like I put the images together, but I don't know why they're together. I don't have any sense of, you know, why the images want to be together. They're, they're, there's probably seven different pieces in here, and I think it finally came to me about this, this fear of diving in and the fear of being seen, um, you know, as an artist and always as an artist there's a fear of um, the imposter syndrome of wondering when do you actually call yourself an artist so I think yeah fear of being seen fear of being judged this is kind of like secrets but deeper you know wisdom of Stonehenge and um, something with an aura going on back here some kind of secret. Um, I did this one in Seattle over a year ago before we moved to California. This, this one just haunts me because this has a fool energy to it. Like she's standing on a precipice, a, a cliff, and she's about ready to jump off. And there's this question mark with a giant optimistic sunflower. And I'll tell you, <laughs> um, my year in California has been anything but an optimistic um, sunflower. But so I'm really working with that to come to terms with the excitement that I had and how difficult it's been and how do I resolve that. It was called trust, so we're working on that. Um, this one, oh, I called it alchemy. Um, again, we get to name our cards. That's the beauty of this making of your deck, too, is you, you call it whatever you want. So she's, this is the alchemy. It's kind of light and shadow, but it's the, the blending and the integration of both in order to uh, achieve wholeness and not relegate you know one to the shadows and I really like that and this one is huh, 
she's this little housewife <laughs> and she's got this precious little boat that's like her dream held in her hands and she's daydreaming and I was let's see dreaming yeah um, so I love it for that because that's kind of it's combining the mundane of what you do every day or day in your life with what you dream about and for me that's you know, tarot and, and art business and my love of, of art Sisterhood. Mm. A lot of wings. I have a ton of wings and butterflies uh, imagery in my cards. Uh, this is a, a breast cancer card. I, I gotta do a whole bunch of videos on chronic illness and cancer and stuff. But anyway, this was coming together in a sisterhood. I'll just do a few more. What is that one? Oh, fine. Yeah, this is fine. Meaning, you know, when someone asks you how you're doing and you say fine, but you're you're really not, but here's the face that you put on for other people is doing the dance when there's really a lot going on upstairs in your mind. This one had a hermit kind of feel to it, and I called it solitude. Just hermit it up in solitude to contemplate, and the waters are a reflection of the moon. And I love that. I don't remember what I wrote. No, I love this one. Love this uh, matrix with the offering of the poison apple. I don't. It's not a lover's element, but you know, it's it's choice. The poison apple. This one kind of has a kind of a high priestess feel. I love anything with a doorway. Doorway is really symbolic. I even called it the high priestess. Mm, the spoon theory. Mm, okay, n minor nudity. Just cautioning. Um, railroad, crossroads to different, I don't even know what I was thinking at the time, but again, butterflies and options. I may not have written about that one yet. Well, this one, I, weird that I love this card so much because it's really not very exciting, but it has a lot of meaning for me and with um, kind of represents, this is like a physical torture and pain endured for the sake of my child with the tunnel of unknown. And there's a lot more to that. Uh, I called it endure. It's basically what you endure for the sake of those you love. I really love it. Uh, more nudity coming up. Shame. Oh, this is pretty easy. This was just about if you're, if any of us are raised in a strict religious environment typically at some point you're going to open the door to other options and confront the element of shame that often comes with traditional religious upbringing all right i think i'll just do like two more i think this one yeah this is called gratitude i just felt this opening of the heart chakra with the green and her arms wide open and this energy radiating with the image of the flower and the butterfly for transformation always with the butterflies this is my migraine card I in all three of them I see in her eyes just like just physical pain because I'm a chronic migrainer and I'm just tortured with tortured with pain um, not really, okay this one I kind of like Oh, this little guy, I just love him. This is called the silent one. I just love this little guy. He's got the little butterfly, but I love this image of this this tree. It's like a little tree of life, but it's just a tiny little isolated island in the middle of the water. And he's just alone with his thoughts. And this is kind of like, you know, wisdom through aging and experience gentleness and self-compassion contented one that's what I called it oh we're getting into some nitty so I'm gonna stop there but anyway so that's my soul deck it's called soul collage um, it was it's like my first and my last deck and so my answer is yes I I have a soul deck it is 100% completely my soul in a box um, that's the way it's supposed to be and I love it. It's simplistic. It's a cheap, easy, gratifying. It 
it's so inexpensive to work through something like this, but I love it so much. And I'll tell you, if a fire raged through my house, I think I, I think this, I would save this box. I would have to um, probably save this box first, and I don't know what next, but yeah. So anyway, Simon, thank you so much for posing that question. Um, it allowed me to put some thought into it and to rediscover um, my soul collage deck, something that I love and adore, and um, looking forward to putting some some hours in this weekend to create some more cards. Thank you.